welcome to the channel thank you very much for checking out today's video now nothing gets non-photographers more excited about a cameraman than the length of their lens or their long exposure photographs now getting a big lens is super easy as long as you have the money but learning how to do long exposure shots can be quite difficult many so-called experts in the photography field will tell you that you shouldn't really be learning long exposure shots until you've mastered all the other aspects of photography and gone to Jedi school. I'm going to show you in this video just how easy it can be, so let's get straight into it. Now there are two things that you are going to need. The first is a basic understanding of manual mode on the Sony A6700 and how to get correct exposure. Now don't worry if you've not learnt this yet, I'll link a video in the top pinned comment on how to do this with your Sony A6700. And the second thing you're going to need is an ND filter. Now as we're practicing to learn long exposure, the ND filter that I recommend is an ND1000. Now ND filters do come in other strengths. Because you're learning long exposure photography, the ND1000 is the perfect filter for you to practice with because you can see how it can affect your shutter speed and how to get them long exposure shots. Right, that's enough with a waffle. Let's get right into it. So the way I'm going to teach you this is by showing you on a tabletop and the first thing we're going to do is adjust the camera settings to get the correct exposure for our scene. Now I'm adjusting the shutter speed, the aperture and ISO to get the correct exposure here. Once we've got these settings dialed in, what we're going to do is take our ND1000 and place it on the front of our lens. Because our ND filter is blocking out the light, it means our image is now underexposed. So what we're going to do is leave our aperture and ISO settings exactly the same. We're going to slow down our shutter speed until we get the correct exposure again. So with a shutter speed of 5 seconds, we're back to normal exposure. Notice that the only thing we've changed is the shutter speed. We've not touched the aperture or ISO. And because our shutter speed determines the length of exposure for our image, we can get super creative. Let's head out in the real world and give you an example. So I headed to Pistol Falls in Wales in the UK. And here's the test shot just to get the exposure correct, just like I previously explained. Now I'm not bothered about composition, structure of the photo or anything like that at the moment. All I'm interested in is getting the correct exposure. And here's the settings on the side. The thing to look for is our shutter speed highlighted in yellow. And by the way, I don't know who this is in the shot. It definitely isn't me though. So next we put on the ND1000 filter, get our composition of the photo correct. Adjust our shutter speed so again we get the correct exposure, remembering not to touch the aperture or ISO settings, and then retake the shot. And going from a standard shot to a long exposure shot really does affect the mood and the energy within your photographs. And if we take a look at the settings again, we can see that the only thing that's changed from our previous standard shot is our shutter speed, which is now 20 seconds. And because we got that shutter speed of 20 seconds, look how it affects our water and how it makes it look silky smooth. So there you have it, a very easy way to remember how to get the exposure correct on them long exposure shots. All you have to do is get the exposure correct in camera first with no ND filter attached. Then place your ND filter onto the front of the lens and all you have to do is slow down your shutter speed until you get correct exposure. The strength of your ND filter determines how long the exposure is going to be. 
So hopefully that all makes sense and now you can head off with your camera and ND filters and start experimenting in long exposure photography. Now two further pieces of advice that I would give you if you want to go out and experiment with long exposure photography. Number one is make sure your camera is set somewhere stable. Number two is make sure any kind of stabilization is set to off in camera or on your lens. By not doing both of these, you can guarantee that your long exposure shots will be ruined. Right, we're nearly at the end of the video and there's only two things left for you to do. First is to give this video a big thumbs up down below. And second, hit that subscribe button if you want to see further content from myself. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch up in the next video. See you soon, everyone.